trigonometric ratios for angles greater than 90 degrees. Now, this lesson is really, really important as you start into working with angles and trig ratios. So make sure that you go through this a couple of times to make sure that you get really solid with the, the fundamentals of it. So I'm going to start by explaining um, some of the terminology that you need to know in order to discuss this properly with your teacher or to read a textbook and understand what exactly they're talking about. So the first thing we want to look at is how do we name the different quadrants on a coordinate plane? So they're numbered. So this would be quadrant one. This would be quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Very important that you get that right. They normally use Roman numerals to describe them. So that's what we're doing here. Now, an acute angle, you know what an acute angle, acute means less than 90 degrees. So if I put an angle in here and I drop a little perpendicular down here like this, you could see that this angle here would be an acute angle and that would be always in quadrant one. That's an acute angle. If you go this way, and so this is this is what you call your um, your terminal arm where it ends. It's a, called a terminal arm. The terminal arm. So think of it kind of like the arms of a clock. So you start with both of them here. So you have your initial arm, your terminal arm, and the so the principal arm would be along here like this. Right? Okay, so this would be like a principal arm down here, principal principal arm and terminal arm. And then as you swing your terminal arm around here, think of it kind of like a clock. So if I go around this way, this is the normal way for positive angles. So positive angles go counterclockwise. Right? We're going backwards, winding back time. So um, positive angles, positive angles, are counterclockwise. So these would all be positive. If I went from here to here, if I swung it over here, I swung it into this quadrant. And if you go the other way, this is called a negative angle. So this is a negative angle. And that's going clockwise. So if, let's say this was 30 degrees, this would be negative maybe 40 degrees. So you have to understand which way you're turning them. So this could still be a terminal arm here. This is a terminal arm. So when we go over to this one here, let's take a look at this. And if I had an angle here, let's say this angle here was 50 degrees. So this would be positive 50 this would be, these are all 50 degrees from here to here. Okay, so I made them so that they're all the same. And we're going to look at what happens as we go around. Um, and this would be, these are all 50 degree measurements. But if I went this way, this angle would be called negative 50 degrees. But I want you to just know that these are all the same measure in here. That's why they kind of intersect, like straight lines, bang. Okay, so... I have a couple of different, well, I have four different angles, and you always have four solutions when you're between zero and 360 degrees for places where you can have an acute, a related acute angle. So there's another term we need, right? This is the acute angle, and this would be a related acute angle for the angle that goes from here to here. So how far is it from here to here? You know that this is 180 degrees, so this has to be 130 degrees. So you have 50, 130. Now I'm guessing you could figure out how far it is from here. If I swung the arm all the way around to here, how far would that be? Well, we went 180 plus 50, so this would be 230 degrees. So if we only look at all the positive angles, we'd have 50, 130, 230, and finally, we have another angle swinging it all the way around to here. Stopping here means this is 360. It's all the way around a circle, 360 degrees, less 50, 
So this would be 310 degrees. Now, if you go to your calculator and you say, okay, what would be the sine of 50 degrees? So let's take a look at all the different measurements we would get. So if we did sine 50 degrees, so I have sine 50 and I get 0 0.7660 approximately. Let's see, what is the sine of 130 degrees? Sine 130. Nice having a calculator do all the work for you. It's also 0 0.7660. Hmm, looks like a pattern here, right? What is the sine of 230 degrees? Whoa, all of a sudden we've got a negative in here. The sine of 230 degrees is negative 0 0.7660. And let's see what the sine of 310 is. Negative. So as you can see, as we went around the circle, we had two positive answers and two negative answers. And that's what's going to happen. And we want to explore why does this happen? Why are some of them positive and some of them negative? So first I'm going to explain it to you by using um, another table here. We're going to take a look at how we explain sine, cosine, and tangent in these quadrants. So that's your little investigation that you would have done in 5.3. So if we take a look here, I've drawn another um, another acute angle on a coordinate plane. And I want you to think about this point here. So let's say I want to know what would be the coordinates of this. How would I explain this in terms of sine um, opposite adjacent hypotenuse? Because we have a right angle triangle here now. And the distance from here to here, you would probably guess would be x. Right? That's x along the x-axis. And this would be the height. So we will call it y. And this here, we're going to think of it in terms of a big circle, a unit circle it's called, and we're going to call this R for the radius. So now that we've done that, we can talk about all of the trigonometric ratios in terms of X, Y, and R. So if I said, what's the sine of theta? You'd say opposite. This is my opposite side. This is my hypotenuse. And this is my adjacent side. Remember those from the early lesson in trig 5.1. So the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be y over r. And the cos of theta would be x over r, adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tan of theta would be opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. So we're going to use these ratios to talk about how we get the different signs in the different quadrants. This is very, very important that you get this straight because it can get very confusing if you're not on top of this. So when I'm in this quadrant here, quadrant number one, if I asked you for the coordinates of any point in this quadrant, they would be positive values for x and y, because I'm here, x and y are both positive. So I'm going to put it like this. So when I'm in this quadrant, x and y are both positive. When I'm in the second quadrant, what happens? Quadrant two. Well, if I go this way, that means x is going to be negative, but y is still positive. When I'm in quadrant three, I go negative x and negative y. So coordinate here might be minus 3 minus 4 or something. So both my x's and y's are negative. And in this final quadrant, if I go this way on the x, that's positive. If I have to go down to a point, that means my y's are negative. So now I think you might be able to see how this is going to affect the sign of these values in the different quadrants. So if I said um, in this quadrant here, in quadrant two, let's call it quadrant two now. So this is quadrant one. My x and y's are all positive and r is always a positive measurement. Okay, you can't have a negative radius. So because all these values are positive, that means everything or all are positive in this quadrant. If I go into quadrant two, and I have to do sine. So my y is positive, 
right? Y is positive and the radius is also positive. So that would mean sine is positive. If I did cos though, I would be using a negative x value and a positive radius. So that means cos would be negative. And tangent, the y is positive and the rate and the x value is negative. So tan is negative. So in quadrant two, the only thing that's positive is sine. And so in your um, in your lesson, which is in the next chapter, the next section, it will say only sine is positive here, and they'll put a big S there. In this quadrant, everything was positive, so they call it all. If we go to quadrant three, and we have both X and Y are negative, that would mean if Y is negative and R is positive, this will be negative. If X is negative and R is positive, this is negative. But for the tangent, I have a positive, a negative over a negative makes a positive. So that means that in this quadrant, the tangent ratio will be positive. And finally, in the last quadrant, quadrant four, we have a positive X and a negative Y. So negative Y, positive, negative. Positive X, positive radius, positive. Negative Y, positive X, negative. So you can see that now, in this quadrant, the only thing that's positive is the cos. So this is C. And that becomes what they call the cast rule, C-A-S-T. Now you have to remember that the A is here and to go counterclockwise, or some people like to say, all students take calculus. Or you can make up your own little saying for whatever you like. But that's why. And these are the ratios that you need to understand to prove which quadrants things are positive and negative. So let's move on to something from your homework assignment. And they jump right into it right away. And they say, well, sine 45 degrees what else could be the very same, would have the very same ratio? Now, because sine 45, I always like to draw a little coordinate plane because it helps you and it also gets you working with the cast rule. So I'm going to write C-A-S-T. And I want sine to be positive. So the acute angle here is 45 degrees. And that means in this quadrant, when this is 45 degrees over here, and I want to be in this quadrant because see the S here means sine has to be positive. So I really want to know how far would it be from here to here. If this is 180 degrees, then this value would have to be 180 minus 45 degrees, which is 135 degrees. So the sine of 45 is the same as the sine of 135. So there will be two places where the sine has the same value. And you can double check these things on your calculator very easily. If I ask for the sine of 45 or the sine of 135, you get exactly the same answer. Now this one is a tricky one because it wants to know what values for cos, and they leave a little blank here, and it wants it to be the negative cos of negative 60 degrees. So you need to spend a little bit of time figuring out what sign do you want the cos to have. So the cos of negative 60 degrees means I've gone down this way, 60 degrees. That's minus 60 degrees. But the question is asking you for theta between 0 and 360 degrees. Okay, so if it's between 0 and 360, this is not a solution. We don't want any negative values. We only want the positive values that give us this solution. So write the, the cast rule on here. So C. So that means when I take the cos of negative 60, I'm going to get a positive answer. And you can double check that. Look, 0. 0.5. The cos of negative 60 is 0. 0.5. So, but I want this the values for cos that would give me the negative 0.5. So you know it's not going to be here because everything is positive here. Everything, right? And here my cos was positive. 
So I want the negative of the positive, right? This is negative, cos of minus 60. Let's put this in brackets so you'll think about it separately. So the cos of minus 60 was a positive answer, right? So that was positive. Even though it says negative degree, negative angle, a negative angle can still give you a positive cosine. Don't confuse that. So I want to know where is cos negative? Where is cosine negative? And that's going to give me a clue to my solution. So not here, not here, but here and here. So the related acute angles are always measured from the x-axis up or down. Think of it like little bird wings flapping up or down from this line. So I put 60 degrees here and 60 degrees here and I figure out what those two values would be. So from here to here is 180 minus 60. 180 minus 60 is 120 degrees. So I'm going to put one of my answers would be cos of 120 degrees. And the other angle is going to be the one that flips all the way. Now think principal angle. So from here all the way around to here and that would be 180 plus 60. So that's going to be 240 degrees. 240 degrees. Okay, so let's take a look on our calculator. Cos of 120. Ah, negative 0.5. That's what I wanted. The cos of 240, negative 0.5. And that's because I wanted the negative of the cos of a negative angle. So negative times a positive means negative. That's the trickiest one in your homework assignment. Okay, let's take a look at these last two. The tan of 30 degrees, tan of 30. Okay, so tan of 30 degrees. And I want, if I take the tan of 30 degrees, my answer will be positive, right? Because it's an acute angle, all positive here. C-A-S-T. Where else is the tangent positive? Right here. So I extend this angle, like this, bring it straight across. And this is my related acute. Think of flipping from the x-axis down. So I have 30 degrees here. And the question is, how far is it now from here to here? My principal angle. So that will be 180 plus 30, 210 degrees. Now don't forget, you can always double check your answers by going onto your calculator, the tan of 30, and the tan of, what do we say, 210? exactly the same answer so I know I'm right you can't you don't have to make a mistake in this right you can check it the last one the tan of 135 degrees so make sure you're in the right quadrant 135 if I came all the way around 35 I would stop at right here 135 degrees and I'd say well is the tan of 135 positive or negative so I go C A S, T. It's going to be negative because only the sign is going to be positive in this quadrant. Now, I need to know the related acute angle. The related acute angle is the distance again from the x-axis back to that terminal arm. So this is the closest x-axis up this way. How far is this? 180 minus 35. <clears throat> 180 minus 135. So that's 45 degrees in here, 45 degrees. So the tan of 135, so let's, let's check that out. Tan 135, it's negative one. Okay, see we had negative because we're in this quadrant and only the sign is positive. And I want that to be equal to the negative tan of something. In other words, if this is negative here and I want the negative of something, then this means this answer here must be positive, right? Because when I multiply it, I want it to give me the same answer. So where is tan positive? That's what they're asking you here. I know it sounds really confusing because it's all kind of backwards. So they want to know where is tan positive? Well, tan is positive here in this quadrant and in this quadrant here where T is positive and where all are positive. So how far is it from here to here? 45 degrees. How far is it from here to here would be 45. But my principal angle means from here 
all the way around to here, and that would be 180 plus 45 is 225. So I'm going to write 45 degrees and 225 degrees. Okay, so when I do the tan of 45, and watch what happens here, tan 45, I get positive 1, but this sign here is negative, so I'm taking the negative of 1, which is negative 1, which is going to be the tan of 135. I hope you can follow that. It's, it is very confusing, but you have to get your mind around it and just take the time to figure out the sign. Check the sign. Right? You want to know what is the sign, S-I-G-N sign, in the quadrant. So you want to make sure you know what value you're looking for. Okay, and finally before we go, I want to take a look at something that isn't in this section, and you don't see it for a while, but I think it's really important to help explain why these things happen. And by doing that, what I've drawn for you here is the sine theta function the graph. So if you did a table of values and you did, you know, like you did degrees and the ratio and you started with uh, zero and one and two, well, you wouldn't do all those. You'd probably do zero. Let's say I did 90, 90 degrees and 180 degrees and 270 degrees and 360 degrees. And I ask you to plot sorry, excuse me, the sine function, you would go through and you'd get the ratio of zero, this one is 1, this one's 0, this is minus 1, this is 0 again. And that's because this is the way the sine function goes. Whoa, we ran out of power, but at least I'm still filming. Oh, there we're back again. I live in the woods. Okay, so here's your sine function. And if I said, where's the sine, sine of theta equal to 0.5? And you can see here by the graph, if I drew it and I said, where is the height 0.5? You would get two answers here and two answers here. So there's four places when I would get a height of either 0.5 or minus 0.5. And these values here happen to be exactly the same distance. These should, well, if I did a nicer graph. These little distances here are all going to be the same from the chord, the values, it's like this, right? So here's my quadrant one, two, three, four. And here is one, here's two. Oops, sorry, I got wrong here. Two, one, two, three, and four. So you can see that as you go around with your function here, you're talking about different quadrants. So you have quadrant one, that's this one, goes from here to here, and look, sine is positive in one and two, and we said that already by looking at the x, y, and r values. So here's my sine positive in quadrant one and two, negative in quadrant three and four. That might help you a little bit for those of you who have more visual learn better visual learners and um, we'll cover this again a little more when we get into um, the next section hope this helps you give me a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe bye